Hello and welcome back and today we want to look at once again the Acer Store Nimbus Store for NAS and we want to focus primarily today on the HDMI output because like a few other NAS brands Acer Store features HDMI in fact on the Nimbus Store 4 and indeed 2 it featured HDMI 2.0a which means that you can support up to 4k resolution media at 60 frames per second but that aside all Acer Store, NAS that Acer Store NASes that arrive with HDMI ports arrive with an app called Acer Store Portal. What this application is, is kind of an access point to HDMI, but it's more than that. When you connect to the NAS via HDMI, not only can you just get, you know, watch all your media, but you have a completely bespoke graphical user interface that you can tailor to have the right apps for you. You can change so many different features about it while simultaneously using the NAS via the network and the internet for all of your other connected users. The HDMI output is just another means, another portal, another access point to your Acer Store NAS. This video is gonna be broken down into two parts of the software review. First and foremost, we're gonna look at here. This is via the browser on a uh, Windows PC. And then from there, we're gonna move over to the HDMI output. Uh, where we're going to get to see the graphical user interface of the Acer Store Portal on the Nimbus Store NAS. So, once you've installed the Acer Store Portal app, there's a few things that you should know that you can do. First and foremost, you can completely configure the device. So, you can say just how much information you want displayed on the Acer Store Portal. So, by default, it will show all of these different options along with some apps and features that are default. So if you don't want it to show your IP address and all the technical stuff, you can remove it. Likewise, by default, it will open into the Acer Store Portal app. What that is, is just the menu, the graphical user interface, the UI of all of the apps. But if you want, you can boot directly into one of the apps listed. I've installed a bunch of apps in advance and you can directly go into them if you so choose. Alternatively, you can set it up and then just go back to the main portal if you so choose. Right now, I've set it up to be the main Acer Store portal, and if you change it, you can click refresh and it will change that system setting. Next, you can change the wallpaper background of the Acer Store portal. Now, right now, it's set up to be this nice beach scene. I know you can't see it on screen for the second half of the video, but just for the sake of ease, let's change it to that one right there. And I'm looking at the screen right now and it's instantaneous and it's now changed to that alternative alternative background there via the ADM Acer Store portal. Next, we can go into favorites and from here you can add um, individual favorite websites to the web browser of ADM. For those that aren't aware, ADM not only has support for all the apps, but you can create um, favorites to individual um, boxes on the ADM. There's a little cubes that all the apps are in but also links to individual websites to be displayed and remember that the Acer store actually supports both USB controllers, Bluetooth or the Bluetooth dongle, radio controlled controllers and of course keyboards and mice. Next you can change the resolution to be befitting of whatever the monitor you're using and of course you can set it to push certain output whereas auto will of course scale the screen accordingly. Next if you're using some monitors that have very individual resolutions or that their scanning or area of coverage is slightly different to normal monitors, the overscan option allows you to change the overall overscan. That's the extending or decreasing of um, available screen coverage on the physical screen. Very useful for those who notice that the screen is outside the comfort area of the monitor you're using. And finally, screen saver is when a certain time will go by, what will happen on the screen, whether it will cycle through your photos, just put the display on screen, a nice wallpaper, or just nothing. So, those are the configuration options of the Acer Store HDMI Portal app. What about the apps themselves? Well, if you go to the App Center via this user interface here on your web browser, you can make your way over to the App Center. If you go to All Apps or switch to Categories, from the Categories area, select Acer Store Portal, and this will list every single app that you can install 
on Acer Store Portal, and there are loads. We have got Amazon Instant, access to your Amazon Instant Media to be watched via HDMI. You've got ways of playing old NES and retro computer games from the Sega. Other web browsers like Firefox. Free Civ, an alternative uh, game freeware that's based on Civ 4. On top of that, you've got LibreOffice for documentation, where if you're using a keyboard and a mouse, boom, you've got output. Molotov TV for watching television shows and other TV channels all around the world. A lot of these I've already installed, and then to install an app, you literally just click install. Don't believe me? Let's install Popcorn Time. Popcorn Time is some sort of recognition tool for media that you've watched. Click install. It will come up with this pop-up. Click install and you can go back and carry on browsing while it installs that application in the background. Spotify, so you can enjoy your Spotify playlist, music videos and just music in general in audio form via the HDMI port and with the graphical user interface that Spotify gives you. RetroArch, that supreme emulation and ROM playing software and remote center so you can use um, network remote controls to browse your device. And when we do the overview of apps from Acer Store, I hope we get a chance to focus on their IP remote for mobile phones. Streams good for streaming media and other sources, and URL pack for creating links to social media platforms and other popular news and entertainment websites on ADM at the click of a button. VirtualBox gives you the uh, ability to enjoy virtual machines on a local environment. What that means is to create a virtual machine, Windows, Mac, Android or more, then connect a keyboard and a mouse and a monitor to your Acer store and then you've got a standalone PC. All the time with the NAS still being used by multiple users at the same time to do all of their NAS tasks. Something that currently only one other NAS brand gives you and that's QNAP. On top of that, more web browsers and a weather app too. So there's loads of options and with more apps available in the beta section and community apps always being put together online, there's loads of things you can do with this. But I think we've been on this long enough. Let's switch to the HDMI interface and learn a lot more about Acer Store Portal and the Nimbus Store NAS. Right, so here we are on the HDMI output of our Nimbus Store 4 using Acer Store Portal. We're using a wireless keyboard and mouse, and we're doing that with a USB Wi-Fi dongle here, the Bluetooth one, sorry, my mistake. And from here, you can see all of those great apps that are available to you that we've been installing earlier. Now, if the sound quality is a little bit off, I do apologize. The microphone, unfortunately, is on a certain limit of cable length and it is on the other side of the room, but I'll try and make sure the sound's as good as possible. As you can see from the screen here, we've got loads of stuff to play with. We can go into the Acer Store software that we were on earlier on, if we so choose from here, or we can go to Chrome and just go to general websites. Um, we have got Netflix, of course, so from Netflix, if we have a Netflix account, we can go straight into this software, and then from here, browse our media as we so choose. But of course, this is based on a web browser interface. If we come out of that and go back to here, we can stream YouTube with the dedicated YouTube application. And again, this application, we can come out of that full screen. As you can see, it is still working within the web browser. If we come out of there so we can enjoy YouTube videos, we've got VirtualBox for enjoying our virtual machines. Surveillance, because we did already set up a camera from a previous video. And as we can see here, we've got that there. I'll wave there at the camera and the surveillance platform is still working, although I have disabled the mic, so it is going to make that crinkly noise. Come out of there, we've got Amazon Video UK. And from here, the ability to look at our Amazon content and view videos and stuff that we've watched. Good Omens cannot recommend enough. But of course, as with the other videos, it's worth mentioning that this is of course based on a web interface using br the browser. So if we come out of that, we can make our way back into the original software. Sorry about that break there. I had to take a very quick phone call. How terribly unprofessional. Anyway, so you've got options there for that retro gaming of Nares and Snares and stuff like that. And of course, the Spotify web player to let you enjoy your Spotify content. For those that have watched my RetroArch videos, you'll know that RetroArch for me is still one of the very best retro gaming softwares out there. And of course, LibreOffice allows us to enjoy 
document editing on our device. If we move forward, there's an entire range of devices and all of them can be sorted out into different tabs. We have individual games that are all pre-installed along with those links to individual websites and streaming platforms that we are able to add. Carrying on, we've got everything from different online streaming services of movies to general web browsing and, you know, sort of video enjoyment websites and video on demand services all readily available. And again, all of these are bespoke. You can get to those social platforms, the streaming platforms and more, and all of them are just one link away by using that website along with access directly to things like Plex. There's both a first and third party application installed on this device for you to enjoy your Plex library via this device. And also the ability to say how and what you want your Plex content to come to. If we exit from that Plex app, we can go back to the main screen and head back to the ADM HDMI interface. Now, we've got WhatsApp support, so you can have those video conversations, and you can even connect, in some cases, a supported USB camera, which is pretty cool. You've got other more unique applications, like Music Score, that let you create and listen to sheet music, which is pretty impressive indeed. And again, all of this can be configured from the ground up, depending on how you want it. Right now, I'm using a keyboard, but again, there are supported devices open to you and all the while you have got the user interface via the internet uh, and the network of your NAS in the background. So that really is about what the HDMI interface of the Asus Storm NAS is like. I would say to give them their due it feels a lot more responsive than QNAP's HD station. We will be doing the full HDMI comparison between the eight hybrid desk station app from QNAP and Asus Store's uh, portal application here. And we'll be going into more detail to see how those different applications compare. And again, for those that have never used Rector of Arch, can't recommend it enough. Load the core, load the content, load the game. Again, we can quit Rector Arch, go back to that screen, and everything feels very responsive. And although um, QNAP and Asus Store have invested a great deal of money inside their respective applications. It's worth noting that it does seem to be a little bit more fluid on this platform. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. I'm just rebooting the Asus Store now. I will see you on the next video. Don't forget to click like and subscribe and learn more about NAS storage and technology in general. Cheerio.